the buzz on the spin. The sisters Gertha, Abigail Gertha, Alice Gertha, Ariana Gertha, you three are needed back at your apartments. The station booms out around them in a deep male voice and over them hidden hologram projectors activate. Alice looks upwards and to her horror sees her face and that of her sisters posted above them, identifying marks like Abigail's nicked ear or Ariana's tiny shrapnel scar along her cheek were being highlighted. Once again, the sisters Gertha, also known as the Gore sisters, are wanted back at your apartments. Station administration wants to talk to you face to face about your recent mistakes that have done harm to Octarine's spin and its interests. The voice continues. For a third time, the Gore sisters are needed back at their current home in Nightside Shadeway Apartments. We need to discuss the damage you've done to the station. The voice finishes. This message will repeat in all sectors of the station every 10 minutes until our representative has spoken with you. What do we do? Abigail demands nearby. She has a large pack loaded with goods. It's clearly a trap. We run. There's no way that this ends up well for us if we don't, Alice tells her as Ariana runs up. Did you? She asks, and Alice nods. We saw. We're getting out of here now, Alice says before her communicator goes off. She brings it up. Who is this? Please hold. The voice from the announcement says, and there's a slight electronic tone. Hello, this is the station official in your apartment. I want you to run. What? He wants her to run? What kind of sense does that make? I want you to run so I get to have fun chasing you down. Oh, please, I have so many tiny frustrations to work out, and if someone wants to volunteer to be my soon-to-be-deceased stress relief, then I am all for that. You're insane, she says. No. More psychotic? Sociopathic? Hey, does anyone here know the right word for... His voice trails away a little as he clearly turns away from his communicator. What is this about? Alice demands. Your fuck-ups cost the station money so get back here so we can discuss the bill. You're not going to kill us or space us? Only if you do something very stupid like try to attack me or skip out on the bill. He answers and she considers. We've already got your ship locked in hard. You're not going anywhere without at least talking to me. And if we try to, then you come after us with a knife in each hand and a smile on your face. She mocks. There's no way this soft little... I was thinking more ballistics, after all I want to use my Luger every now and again. Luger? Old-fashioned model of a kinetic slug thrower. It's a classic, right there with the Mauser with its beautiful, angular design that tapers into a pipe. Say what you will about World War II era Germany, and there's a lot to be said, but they made some handsome and practical weapons. What? Well, it gives me more range and I just like this weapon okay? It's not my most powerful or reliable, but I just like it, and I'd like to rack up some more kills with it, he says, and it takes Alice a moment to fully process the exact type of threat she just got. How do you even categorize someone trying to encourage you into a situation where they feel justified in killing you and are completely open about it? What is even going on? What do you want, she asks. I want you to run so I can kill you, he answers. Not happening. Fine, then come here and we can talk like the reasonable beings that we occasionally pretend to be. And you won't attack us? My attacking you hinges on the conditions that you get violent or start running. So instead, I'm going to ask you if I'm going to get violent. He returns the question and she pulls away the communicator to look at it and make sure that she's not under some kind of influence. This is not going according to any kind of plan or reason or sense in the slightest. What's going on? Ariana asks, and Alice stretches out her antenna. Abigail and Ariana grab on and she passes the memory to them and they stare at her. Are you playing with us? There's no way this is... this is insane. Alice nods, and both of her sisters nod, too. There's no way this is serious. All right, cut the shit, Saki. You're going to tell me what's really going on, or I'm going to find you and hurt you, boy. Bring it on. 
I'm in your apartment and sitting on your couch center cushion. Don't be late. He answers and the call cuts off. Stupid bitches think they're calling a bluff. This is gonna be awesome, Hoagie says as he adjusts his seating and activates his station badge. An environmental shield specced for outer space is enough to turn plasma into a painful but non-lethal experience, and a laser into flash sunburns and little else. His wives activate their shield belts and take up positions all over even as he draws his luger and waits. Mona, Mira, and Teresa are on the other couch and watching nervously. So have those three always been the brains of this outfit? I ask, because it seems their latest scheme has fallen through rather badly. It may be wise to consider a change in leadership. He notes deliberately stirring the pot and throwing further and further blame onto the Gore sisters. It may be best for a group like this to split apart. The wait isn't long, especially as they left the front door open and two of his wives were standing to either side of it at the ready. Being short can have advantages as most people of average size, such as three Lutran triplets, would look right over them at first impulse and walk right into the crossfire. His girls would need to merely point upwards in order to avoid hitting each other while bombarding the idiots in banger blasts. It doesn't take much longer, and there's a slight cry of shock causing him to chuckle. Come in. Come in, Gore sisters. We need to talk. Not her hubby. Looks like a cleaning lady. Oh, well, there goes the drama. Please leave, miss. I'm trying to be all-knowing and spooky here. Hoagie calls out and there's an involuntary snort from Miss Catspaw on the opposite couch. How can you take this so calmly? Mona Blaze asks him. What am I supposed to do? Panic myself into uselessness? Develop a nervous tick and shoot myself in the crotch? No. All his surrounding wives protest at once and he chuckles out loud. Well, that's me outvoted. So I'm going to remain calm and when I'm calm I can find the humor in a situation. Hoagie says smugly. Although for the point of burning time more than anything else, what was your big plan with Miss Shinescale? I mean, really, you drained her own account to pay for her accommodations and full points for that bit of practical sense. But did you really have no plan for the family just flat out saying no? Well, no, we didn't. We didn't expect them to just cut her loose like that. They, they're just business people, you know. They don't make hard choices or live a hard life. They don't get it, Mona Blaze states. According to who? You don't really know someone's life unless you live it yourself. For all you know, the shine scales started out shining other people's scales by hand and slowly built up the money until they could make their first business. What's that old song lyric? Everybody has a story that could break your heart? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, but... But what? Do you have some kind of hatred for the rich? You do realize that the master of this station has obscene amounts of wealth, right? Well, that's different, Mona protests. How is it different? She's not one of the upper class. She owns her own private station, eats the finest of foods, never worries about her next meal or whether or not she has money. How is that not upper class? She's on our side still upper class, and what is your side anyways? Are you seriously trying to argue philosophy with a mass arsonist hubby? Liz asks him and he shrugs. Well, I figure if we burn time, she's less likely to burn down the building, he says sardonically. Hey, I'm not like that, Mona protests. The hell you're not. I've seen your rap sheet. You've burnt down at least two major buildings with people inside them. He pushes, maybe this will give him some interesting, they deserved it, or not. Pity. A galaxy-wise saboteur would have been another wonderful gift for the undaunted. They wasted their lives in endless pursuits for more stuff. Stuff. Useless stuff. Anarcho-arsonist. Got it. Hoagie dismisses her and she bristles. What did you call me? Anarcho-arsonist. You want to rip down the systems of authority and your chosen method is setting things on fire. Hoagie explains. He's going to have to keep an eye on her in case she decides that some part or even the whole of Octoran's spin is part of the authority. 
especially now that he's pointed it out. Hold it, the girls at the door shout. All three of you in and without any fuss. The three Lutrin are hustled into the room with two Sharbi in pursuit, bangers ready to blast, and stop when they behold Hoagie sitting on their couch. Hello, ladies. Good to see you. Have a seat. We need to talk, he says, gesturing to the couch where Mona, Mira, and Teresa are sitting. What is even... One of the Lutrin begins and he points his Luger at them and then uses it to gesture to the couch. They recognize it as a weapon and follow his instructions closely and quickly. Thank you. Now that you're all here, I am merely the bearer of bad news, not the cause of it. The cause of today's and your future misfortune here on Octarin Spin is your decided failure to keep hold of your hostage, to have any idea what to do with a hostage when they suddenly became worthless or even the wherewithal to kill or in some way dispose of your problems in a way that did not damage the station. But how could that idiot child damage the station? The shine scales are cloaking you idiots. They're naturals at stealth and subterfuge. The moment that girl was out of your sight, she was gone. And being a girl unused to living in this kind of place, she of course stumbled onto something dangerous. Is, is that what we're in trouble for? I've dealt with Shine Scale. She's gone. I've dealt with the mess she stumbled into and scattered throughout the station. Now I deal with you for bringing her here and then putting her into a situation where all that was doable. Before anyone starts arguing law or other such bullshit. No, this is not about law. This is not about order. This is about fucking up. But, one of the Lutrin begins, shut up and let me finish. Hoagie snaps and she leans back. There are no laws here. That is very true. But no matter where you go or what you do, there are always consequences to your actions. This is what the meeting today is about. By not having a plan for when your hostage scheme fell through the station, has suffered millions of lost credits in both damages and lost production to say nothing of the medical bills from the people hurt and the price of replacing, cleaning, and repairing damaged equipment. Understand? So, you're not going to throw us into a prison or anything, you just want money? Until you've settled your debts with the station, all of you are going to be living under an extra 50% surcharge on top of everything for whatever goods or services you buy. Your bill is in the millions. But we're not insane. We don't expect it all right away. But if you cause any more problems while this debt is over your head, no extra chances, no mercy, no clemency, we kill you and take your stuff for compensation. But that's not fair. Am I seriously having this conversation again, where I tell the career criminal that things are not fair on an outlaw station and that is a good thing that is in their favor? Of course it's not fair. If this situation was fair, you'd be in a jail cell and awaiting sentencing in front of a mech and reach judge. But this isn't fair, so instead of paying your dues to the political entity you've done a lot to try and fuck over, you're instead paying the price of damaging the station. Literally. I... But that's millions of credits. It will take years, if not decades, to pay it off. Yay. That's the price of being stupid, of not having a plan. It hurts, doesn't it? And it should hurt. Are you going to make a mistake like this again now that it's brought upon such a huge debt onto your head? Hoagie asks, and there's a lot of heads shaking. Good. He stands up and their gaze follows him. I'm glad we've had this talk. Any questions? What if we just leave and never come back? Then we have to eat the debt. But if you ever come back and try to ignore the debt or come back under another name to get around the debt, then you're leaving the station without any atmosphere. So if we never come back, you won't chase us? No, but we do talk to other stations, to other outlaw havens. You're going to run out of places to hide very, very quickly, Hoagie says, and they stare at him. Anything else? There is nothing else. 